Hey, good morning, gang. Welcome to this latest installment today for best practices with description keys in Civil 3D. So a little bit about me. I've been working with some templates lately over at TopCon, and I've been noticing some redundancies set within the description key layer set in multiple different places. And really trying to understand how they work and what are the best practices to, uh, to successfully create those description keys. So we're going to take 10, 12 minutes today and just discuss some overarching concepts uh, with description keys. So today's agenda, working with description keys. So first thing, um, layers on template with startup. What layers need to be there and what layers don't? And do I can they be created when the key's called for it or can they be living in the template all the time? And th this really helps out with layer bloat, so to speak, with your template. So if you have a lot of layers in your template all the time, that's going to be just a lot to carry around. So let's minimize that. Color versus no color and how that pertains to layer creation. And then last thing, where to set those layers? Do we set them in the marker style and the label, label styles, maybe at the block level? Uh, what is the best practice to do that? So, all right, let's uh, get into Civil 3D here and let's, uh, let's bring, some, bring some points in. So this is a super simple file. It's gonna be abstract. So we're just gonna talk about the concepts uh, and how they work versus a large description key with a lot of points going in different directions. So you can see in this file, we have three layers. So a couple different points we're gonna bring in and they're gonna come in on different layers. And then what we're gonna see here in our description key is that we have four keys. So remember that code is that raw description that's tied to the point. So we have a code BM, we have a code G asterisk. So that means anything that comes after the G is negated by the description key. So if you have G with a bunch of letters after it, you'll just read the G. Then we have a misc, miscellaneous, and then TR asterisk for tree. So first thing, let's go ahead and bring some points in and let's just watch the layers populate. So we can see here that we have, let me grab this here. We can see that we have three layers that live in this file but you'll notice that the V node miscellaneous is not in the file yet. And the reason for that is that layer is a white non, there's nothing unique about that layer. It's a white, it's line types continuous, it can just be a default layer. So this is one of those layers that doesn't need to live in your template. Let it be created when the key calls for it. One thing that's nice about this is think if you have a, you know, 200 or 300 keys, that, that can really minimize your, your layers. Um, Quite, quite extensively if they're not called out. So we're gonna watch this Vino miscellaneous get created. And then we're gonna also watch the colors that are tied to these three. So we're gonna see the benchmark at 150, 11, and 62. Okay, points from file. Let's go ahead and bring in our description key. So this is just four points. And you can see that we have four raw descriptions that are tied here. So the first one, remember that G asterisk. So that means that anything that comes after the asterisk is, uh, it doesn't matter whatever's after the asterisk. So four points, we're gonna bring them in. Say okay. And here's our four points. If we go to our layer properties manager here, you'll notice that this miscellaneous layer was created. So that's that was created because that miscellaneous uh, key was, uh, was called out. So first thing, color versus no color. So if you don't have colors tied to your to your points, or there's nothing unique about it, have that layer be created when the key calls for it versus having it always live in the template all the time. Okay, second thing, getting into where to define the layers. So there can be a few different places to, to define them. There's, and, there's, and, there's, and there's good reasoning to have them in each spot. And, uh, but the one thing you really wanna eliminate is you wanna, have, uh, you wanna eliminate redundancy. So you wanna have one source of truth. If we change this here, this is gonna change it for everything versus having it set in multiple different spots and you're chasing your tail around, so to speak. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple different ways to set. So first thing here, and, th and this is what I see happen a lot, is uh, we have our vNode benchmark layer right here. So that means when the code, when the raw description or the code VM is used, it's gonna go to the benchmark style and this point elevation description style. And the layer is gonna be on vNode benchmark. So I see this happen quite frequently. So if we click on the styles here, edit this, and we go to the display tab, you'll notice that the vNode benchmark is defined here as well. So we have it defined here, then we have it defined here. So this is a redundancy because it's already gonna go to the vNode benchmark layer called out in the description key. So one thing I find to be a lot easier to streamline things is just set this all to that zero layer. 
so that the color is going to be by layer. It's going to go to this vNode benchmark, and then that'll go to that 150, that bluish color. So I really encourage you to keep those point styles um, set to zero and then by layer. There's a, there's a, and, and there's an argument against uh, doing this. One argument is that if you want to have different colors set, so say you want your label to be red and your marker to be blue, this is a spot where you could define that. So then you could have all your labels for that marker come in and then they come in blue and then you know your your marker is red for example so this is where you could have your you know vnode benchmark text maybe or any sort of different color defining the label so that the color comes in with that okay getting into the label styles as well so i find that there can be a lot of layer bloat here as well so if you have your label style composer here, so this is that point elevation description label style. And you can define a layer within the label style. And this this could, this, could, this can be fine. Say like you have a vNode text layer that's set for everything. Uh, you could do that. One thing that happens though is you have a vNode benchmark text and every single label style that's unique gets its own layer tied to it. And that there just can be a lot of redundancies with it. So just be careful with how many layers you define in the label style. One thing I'd really encourage is just if, you if it doesn't need to be unique, then just leave it at that zero and then let it come in with the, uh, with the layer defined in the description key. Okay, so just talked about where to define layers. So define them here in the description key. Define them in the style. So for that uh, marker and the label. And then you can also define them in the label style. And then the last place you can define maybe not layers so much, but more colors is at the block level. So this style here, so you'll notice that in our file that miscellaneous is that white layer. There's nothing unique to it, but a color comes in for the marker. And that's because it's defined at the block level. So if we open up this basic X here and you'll notice the marker, we have this basic X AutoCAD, um, this basic X AutoCAD block symbol for the marker. And if we go the, the, to the display of it, this is set to by block. So this means that no matter what layer it comes in on, it's always gonna read the color of the block, which is set to red. So this could be a good way to really set things in one spot for a lot of different, so say you have a basic X that you always wanna be red regardless of what layer it's coming in on, this is a place you could set it. I would encourage you to be careful with setting things down at the block level, because that's a few layers deep. You gotta remember everybody needs to be on the same page with it. Everybody needs to understand that it's working like that. And you can, you know, so like, for example, if this was a colored layer, let's say that was blue and then, but the marker comes in red. So then you have to understand that it's actually not reading the color of the description key, but rather the color defined at the block level. Uh, so just be careful with it, but it can be a good way to set things, especially for a basic marker that you always want to be the same color regardless of uh, what the key calls for. Okay, so now that we've talked about setting where to set those layers, it can be, you know, one, one argument is that, well, if we set, if we let the description key, if we let the description key decide the color of the object, then I don't have any control of the label style or versus the point style. So it's all on the same layer. And one thing I'd, one, and, you know, one thing I'd encourage you to work with is work with point groups. So a couple different things about point groups. So you can see here, I have a couple different point groups created. And what we're gonna see is how these work dynamically every single time if they're built, if you have them set up based on your points in your template file. So all four of those points come in on the all points, all points point group, that, that's a default thing. And then let's go ahead and work with our no display point group. So I've added this to include all points. So all points that go into the file are gonna to go to this no display point group. You can see in our information that the point style and point label style is set to none. And I haven't set any overrides yet. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in one second. So let's just say apply, okay. And then you can see we have that home plate disappeared. And now we can, now let's manipulate our points and hide all our points. So if you, this is a hierarchy process here, point groups and whichever one's on top governs. So no displays above all points. So what you would expect is that all your points would disappear because they're part of the no display point group. And the reason they don't 
is because they need to be overridden. They need to be overridden because the description key always takes precedence. So the description key doesn't work with the point groups unless it's been overridden to uh, let the point groups dictate what, um, what style should be displayed. So hit style here, my label style, apply, okay. And you can see our points now have disappeared. So our points are in a no display state. So let's say we want to manipulate certain points. Let's say we want to work with certain points and see a sort of different specific format with them, things like that. So there's uh, the, the treat this as like a third point group. So you can group things by descriptions. So for example, let's leave the code BM and G to be part of this point group. And then you can see here we have BM and G. And you can also go with numbers matching. So say you wanted to grab points, you know, 1 through 20 or 100 to 120 or things like that, you could do that. And then let's override. So what we're going to do is we're going to override our style. And what we're going to do is let's go to our information right here. And then let's grab this point elevation description style. So what this is going to do is this is going to, this is going to bring in our, our two, uh, our, our, our two descriptions. So what we see here is our properties. We've overridden, we just overridden the label style. So we just want to see the label style. That's going to be the same for both of these, that point number elevation description right here, but we didn't override the marker style. So we see, we still have those two, the, um, the benchmark and then the gas valve, I believe. So this is just ways you can manipulate those point styles. So say you want to, not see certain points in certain areas or you want to manipulate the label styles things like that that can all be done within your point groups and then we say apply and we say okay now one thing that's really nice about this is that if we go to all our points here or we can actually move these up properties let's move all our points up top here and then let's say we delete them all out now you can see we have these home plates right here properties and then you can see that the, so this is that PED, it still pulls that same raw description. So it still sees it. So this would automatically populate when you bring your points into your file. And so this is a great way to have things predefined, set up, so there's not any extra legwork redefining your point groups every single time you create a file. So just to sum things up, a couple different things to think about with your description keys. So first thing, layers on startup. So if you have no colors to find for your keys, in certain, so say you have, you know, half your keys have colors, half them don't, some keys don't need colors, then those, those layers don't need to be in your file on startup. You can have them created when the key calls for it. Second thing, where to define your layers. So I'd really encourage you to define them at the description key level and then any other levels, think about the reason why we want to have that. And that really helps out, um, that really helps out by not having many redundancies set in your file. And it really makes it simple to have one source of truth so to speak, that if you change it here, then this is how it's going to change it for this key, for this color, for everything. Last thing, work with point groups. Use point groups to manipulate the display of your points. So have that description key, bring them in, and then all those points that you want to have changed, that so you want to change the label style, you want to change the marker style, work with those point groups. And then you can have a lot of different point groups, and it'll automatically see the raw descriptions that are matching it and add them into that point group. So it's an automated process that you don't need to be defining every time. So I thank you for your time and um, good luck with your with your future designs.